guys, my name is Priscilla Elias and I hope you're doing fine. As you've probably noticed on the last couple of videos I released here on the channel, I've been slowly doing some upgrades to my edit setup. Up until a couple of weeks ago, all I used to edit my photos and videos was my MacBook Pro with a 15-inch screen, a magic mouse, a lacy as an external HD, and a card reader to transfer my photos and videos to my computer since my MacBook does not have an input for them. Well, things changed now and I will tell you all about this upgrade and why I chose to invest in my editing setup right after the intro. <laughs> I had been using the setup I just mentioned before the intro for about three years now. And before that I didn't even have a MacBook. I used to use a Dell that didn't even have a very good screen to start with. So every time I edited a photo I sent it to my phone to see if the colors were good enough and usually I ended up needing to do some adjustments after seeing it on my phone screen. So yeah not reliable really. I worked full-time for a fashion boutique for quite a while and I saved up some money to do my first upgrade. That's when I bought my actual MacBook Pro and a good external HD. The MacBook Pro screen is very good and I consider it very reliable. I think it's pretty accurate and consistent with colors and image quality, but the point is since I started doing more product photography about two years ago, I started feeling more pain on my back and arms because of a couple of things we will go through here. The first thing is the MacBook screen is pretty small and when you need to edit very small details like dirt, fingerprints from a product or even when you need to work on high-end skin retouch, which I have been doing quite often for some of the portraits tutorials you've seen here on this channel, what ended up happening is that I was back and forth with my back and neck all the time in order to get closer to the screen to see more details. I could zoom in and out, of course, but still, since it was a small screen, it started becoming a frequent movement I did. I just couldn't help myself, you know. For that reason, as soon as I got some new bigger photography jobs in the last couple of months, I decided to reinvest it all in my business. I decided to buy a monitor that, of course, might not be a high-end monitor, but that would be very reliable for me to work with photos and videos with accuracy without having to force my eyes, my neck, my back. After a couple of weeks of research, I decided to go with the Enzo Color Edge CS 2740 with a 4K UHD 27-inch screen, 99% accuracy for Adobe RGB colors, USB Type-C connectivity, pixel density of 164 ppi, 350 cd brightness. I figured it would be enough for me to accurately and comfortably edit my photos and videos. I've already used it to edit some product shots since I bought it a couple of weeks ago and what can I tell you? life changer. I haven't printed any of the photos I edited using it yet, but from the feeling I have of comparing my MacBook screen and the photos I have printed before, I'm really confident that it's really accurate. So far it served its purpose and I'm really happy with it. But that was not the only upgrade I did to my setup. It was just the beginning. I also bought this armrester that is adjustable, easy to mount, and it's very ergonomic. Since I usually use my table quite low and I do not use a footrest, having a chair with arms is something that usually does not work for me. So I took the arms of my chair off and I installed this to my table. And so far I love it. And if you're wondering why I use my table low, well, here's something you don't know. I'm only 160 tall, so, you know, quite a small person living in the land of giants. Yeah, the average suite is much taller than I am and most good affordable office chairs will not go as slow as I would need them in order for me to be able to use it either without a foot rest or with the arms. Yeah, life's not thought of for small people like me. Oh well, let's quit the drama. Let's keep moving. I also changed my mouse. I think the Magic Mouse is very good for daily 
basic tests, but for editing it's a no-no. I decided to try the Logitech MX Master 3. I was a bit resistant to switch because I was not sure I'd get used to it, especially because as I said, I'm a small person and it looks kind of huge, but I decided to take a chance and really, it feels so much better. So much smoother, so much more ergonomic, and not only that, customizable extra buttons are amazing. It's a great thing to be able to customize it for each of the softwares I use. So for example, for Photoshop, I set a button to zoom in, the other one to zoom out, another one to change the brushes. And the truth is I can set anything to any of the buttons in the mouse. And I can do that for each of the softwares I use, which is very nice. The result? I've been using this setup for about two weeks now and I feel such a relief on my back and shoulders. Now I can edit just as much time as I did before, but I do not feel a thing. Or to be honest, come on, when I edit like seven to eight hours a day, sometimes I feel a little bit of a pain, but it might be because it's just too much time and maybe because I'm still a bit hurt from the previous setup. Done. No, this does not end here. I also made an upgrade to my desk. I used to use a simple IKEA desk with adjustable feet and come on, it was not a bad table at all. The main reason why I decided to switch desks was because as you probably know, my YouTube and photo studio is this small room in my house. And every now and then I need to move my table to make some photos and videos. I thought it would be not very practical or reliable to move this table around all the time with this 10 kilo plus monitor over it. I could end up breaking something and that would cost me much more than a table. So I decided to get a strong desk on wheels. And since I was doing that upgrade, why not have a table that would serve me well for the next 10 or more years to come? So why not have one that I could stand also? That way I would be even more versatile both for editing and for composing different scenes for my YouTube videos. I got this desk from a Swedish company called AZ Design. I personally had a problem with it. The first one I received had a broken piece. The button that brings it up and down was not working and I was not very happy that it took them about three weeks to send me a new one when the average delivery estimate time for the desk itself was of approximately one week. It feels pretty strong though and it has a 10-year warranty so hopefully my problems with it ended here and besides that problem I had with it, it looks strong and reliable. So let's see, I will keep you updated on that. And finally, the last thing I bought to upgrade my editing setup was a portable SSD. I've always edited with a normal external HD. I've been using Lacey's HDs for a while now and they're pretty solid, but sometimes when I did heavier photo editing with many Photoshop players, it got a little bit slow and that kind of slowed me down a bit. When using it with Lightroom, it worked just fine, but for Photoshop heavier edits and for videos, editing straight from that external HD with a normal HDD such as the Lacey was not a very pleasing and seamless experience. For video, I don't recommend it at all. For photos with Photoshop, well, if you're starting out, it will work for you, as it worked for me for more than three years. But if you can go with an SSD, life changer. Now I edit my videos straight from this Samsung SSD and what can I say? It flows perfectly. The same for my heavier edits in Photoshop. It feels like I'm editing straight from my computer's internal HD. In case you want to know more about any of the items I bought to upgrade my editing setup, I will leave a link for each one of them in the description in case you want to check any of them out. And this is where it ends. This is my editing setup update for 2021, three years after I started shooting photography professionally. I also just bought a Sony a7S III with a 16-35 Sony lens and from now on I intend to shoot a lot more outdoors on the go and also to get more video jobs. So I'm very excited for this new phase of my business and I will work hard to make all of this new gear reflect directly on the quality of the content I create for you. I'm really happy with these changes because they really 
brought my comfort and workflow to another level. And you know what they say, right? You get what you pay for. Sooner or later, I'd end up spending some money and energy on something that might be irreversible, my health. So I thought it would be about time to do this for myself. So how do you like my setup, guys? Any tips for an even better work editing experience? I'd love to hear that from you because as I keep saying in every other video, you always help me a lot to get better and better in many different ways. And I'm really thankful for that also. If you like this video and if it helped you somehow, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to this channel. I cannot thank you enough for that. Also, please let me know if you like this type of video where I share my setup, equipment and stuff like that. And if you'd like to see more of this here on this channel, your opinion is go to me. So don't save it for yourself. Thank you so much for watching me and I will see you in the next video. Ciao! That is adjustable, easy to mount. Really easy to mount, as you see. It's always been easy to mount. Fuck. I to want to show something. I'm doing a video about it. Then it's, it fucks up.